I'm Roly Keating, I'm Chief Executive at the British Library. Thank you very much for coming and uh, could you please uh, tell us about the library system in uh, Great Britain, how many public libraries are there? Uh, in the UK overall, so England, Wales, Scotland and, uh, and Northern Ireland, uh, so four different nations together, we have about 3,600 public libraries. Um, across the different localities. That includes some mobile libraries, some smaller ones, mm -hmm. and a variety of different models uh, in the way that they're run. But they're all overseen by local authorities across the UK. Right. How do you think, what is uh, the image of the new modern library? What should be there? What is the library today? In many ways, a library is what it has always been. I think it's about connecting people to the content they need serving citizens, whoever they are, whatever their backgrounds, helping them find and use that content, so not just discovery, but interpretation, uh, validation, uh, support. Uh, and increasingly, I think it's also about a, more of a social mission, providing a public space that's a safe mm -hmm. space for people of all backgrounds to come together. And taking this into account, what are the competences of the librarian in this situation? Changing all the time, I think. <laughs> uh, there are some unbroken skills about expertise and knowledge and understanding of information. Um, but I think increasingly interpersonal skills are absolutely mm -hmm. vital. Uh, a 21st century librarian or library professional is someone who's going to be interacting and dealing with people from all backgrounds at many, many different levels. There's a kind of versatility uh -huh. they need because it's a very multifunctional role now, long past the period, we're long past the period where it was simply about the management and distribution of books, say, or, 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 or other kind of products. Now you need people, even if they're not technologists, they need to be very sensitive to technology, sympathetic to the digital age, uh, to understand its risks and its mm -hmm. positives, to think about the way you can apply tools like artificial intelligence or machine learning mm -hmm. or social media. And I think a general um, comfort level and flexibility with change because mm -hmm. of all the areas of human life, the knowledge economy is probably the one that's changing most rapidly. Libraries are and can be right at the center of that revolution, but it needs us all as professionals to stay very alert to what that means. You live with a lot of soft and hard skills actually, so how do you educate the librarians in the UK? What is the system? Uh, so there is a process of, uh, the, the fundamental process is one of accreditation. We have uh, an organization called SILIT, which is the chartered Institute of Library Information mm -hmm. Professionals and they oversee the accreditation. There are I think 14 different uh, uh, courses in different uh, institutions that are run across the UK that can, through which you can get a SILIP accredited uh, um, qualification uh, and that works well but I think the current challenge is to diversify the workforce because that's only one route and I think we can talk more widely maybe about the makeup of the workforce in libraries, but it's important that they reflect the whole range and diversity of the people they serve. So I know SILIP are working hard to think about other routes in other kinds of professional mm -hmm. qualification. Um, shortly there's a scheme to create an apprenticeship in library and uh, archive skills, mm -hmm. um, which will hopefully reach out to communities who maybe hadn't thought about librarianship or libraries mm -hmm. as a profession. But if we're going to have those very versatile individuals, we need to open the profession up to many, many different kinds of people who might not have thought it was going to be their career. Yeah. Um, Non-certified um, professionals uh, can work in the library or no? Oh, yes, they can, but in different kinds of roles. And it depends on the kind of library that you have. Um, and actually, it, it, it's for each local authority to determine in a way, how they run their service. Mm -hmm. But the powerful principle is that you need trained librarians at the heart of every good library yeah, service. Right. 
but we have a growing workforce of volunteers, of, um, of apprenticeship, apprentices of other kinds, and of course libraries themselves as organisations do many different kinds of things mm -hmm. which require some team members to bring wholly different skills. They may be technologists, mm -hmm. uh, they may be in communications and marketing, their discipline may be in education or learning or the provision of services to schools. And certainly for a, a large organisation like the British Library, we have very, very diverse sets of skills and qualifications of which pure librarianship is only one. And uh, how do you rate the success of the library, of the public library in the UK? Do you have any criteria to understand? <laughs> Um, that's a very good question. I th we do, there are certain measures that are used mm -hmm. and these are measures of um, visitor numbers and loans, for instance, and levels of stock. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's fair to say that there's a lively debate about whether those are all the right measures. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, for the kind of organisation you and I are discussing, we need to be more sensitive to trying to measure the total reach into the community that libraries have and the kind of impact they're having on people's lives. Uh, and some of those very traditional measures may be becoming a little bit, about, a little bit outdated. Uh, and I think if you maybe ask me that question in five or 10 years time, we may be measuring very different things. And that might paint a, a truer picture perhaps of the success and impact that libraries are already having and have always had, mm -hmm. but we maybe haven't always noticed it because we don't have a clear metric for certain kinds of social value, for instance. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have uh, any um, you know, problems or thoughts about the situation with the age of librarian? I mean, uh, are many young librarians going to the libraries or because in Russia, sometimes uh, they graduate from the university, but they are not going to work, to work in the library, you know. Uh, but they are going to some other companies or places. Do you have the same problem in the UK or no? Uh, and if no, how, <laughs> how you? No, in, in all honesty, I don't have the, the statistics to, to be able to answer that ac accurately. I think um, my impression is that there is a younger generation coming through. I think there was perhaps a dip. I think maybe the, the image of the library as an institution and as a profession became a little bit stereotyped and maybe certain popular culture representations uh, weren't helpful. There have been funding challenges undoubtedly for local authorities. So they've literally not been able to employ uh, as many staff members as they would like. So that means that even for young people graduating, there haven't always been the job opportunities or the good job opportunities. But I think, and my impression is that we, we're turning a corner at the moment. And actually, um, many of the younger people, younger professionals I engage with are deeply inspired by the enduring values of what a library is. And young people are often looking for meaning and purpose in their lives. And it is, if you are smart, intellectually engaged with a sense of mission and ambition and social purpose, then actually a library is an amazing place to work and a profession full of opportunity. And I think uh, my sense is that there's a fresh generation coming in and we may have had a little bit of a gap and yeah. you have to cope with that as a profession, but I'm optimistic about the future. Mm -hmm. uh, could you please um, provide us with some examples of new services in the libraries that are in the UK which are quite successful and uh, they weren't before? Um, yes, there are, th there are, let me think of a couple that are, are very current, mm -hmm. that are, are, are relevant. Um, at the moment, we're in the middle of the summer, and for about 10 years now, um, there's been a pan-library project called the Summer Reading Challenge, mm -hmm. uh, which 
even though the libraries are all run separately in different local authorities, this has unified all of them. Um, uh, originated with a very dynamic charity called the Reading Agency, who created a project to inspire children who maybe weren't so keen on reading uh, to spend the summer with a challenge to read, uh, I think it's maybe half a dozen books across the summer. Uh, and they can be any books, anything they, uh, they choose. But there's a theme every year. And this year, for instance, the theme is space travel because of the moon landing anniversary. And it has had massive impact. It's become almost like a summer festival that brings all libraries together and changes the atmosphere in public libraries. Families, parents know it's going on. The schools promote it. And it's going from strength to strength. So that's been an innovation that has really helped with one of the great missions of libraries, which is general literacy and, and reading. Uh, and then one other example, which is very different, which we at the British Library uh, have been very closely involved and, and uh, one of the initiators, um, is using libraries to support uh, business and entrepreneurship mm -hmm. uh, because we believe libraries are, for, uh, are all about access to information and in an increasingly entrepreneurial economy, many, many people don't have any access to business support or any clue mm -hmm. about how actually to research and build a small business. Yeah. Uh, and traditional business advice services can be very off-putting, but libraries are very welcoming. And uh, so at the British Library, for about 12 years now, we've run something called a Business and IP, or Intellectual Property Center, which is one of our spaces entirely devoted to you or me. If we have an idea to set up a business, we will help you for free. And then we can set up. There can be workshops and one-to-one -one sessions and great access to market research and, uh, and information. And we've had real success. It's generated uh, thousands of businesses, new jobs. It's very cost effective. And that's now rolling out um, as a partnership to, I think, a, so far a dozen libra public libraries mm -hmm. across the UK. So if you go to Manchester or Leeds or Sheffield mm -hmm. or Glasgow, uh, you'll find a business and IP center there jointly run with the National Library, with the British Library. And it's having real impact on local economies, on mm -hmm. job creation. It's proving very successful at supporting businesses owned by and run by women, much more than traditional uh, business services and people from uh, uh, minority ethnic backgrounds. Uh, and it's also beginning to change the narrative around public libraries at a political and policy level because we now have a real bank of evidence to show very practically how free access to information and the support in that, all those principles yeah. we began our conversation with, uh, can really directly support economic growth. Great. And uh, who supports the library? Public libraries in your country and in China. Sorry, who supports uh, them? Support, yeah. uh, they are um, owned and run, uh, run and funded by their individual local authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in Northern Ireland, there's one library authority, but then in Scotland, Wales, England, there are uh, local regions that uh, uh, run a library service, and they have to. That's part of their, their, their role under the law. Uh, and then um, at strategic level in England and Wales, the uh, Arts Council, Arts Council England, have a role in overall strategic mm -hmm. direction. And then at national level, um, it's for the government mm -hmm. to have a final backstop responsibility for ensuring that there is a comprehensive library service in the UK. Have any projects uh, on the state level to support the municipal public libraries? Maybe some grants or modernization projects. Um, uh, we're there are one or two, um, and I should say we're extremely interested with with, with the, the the current Russian initiative because <laughs> it's definitely uh, a, um, a very large scale one, uh, which I think it'll be fascinating to observe how it works. 
Um, but the, uh, there is funding that can come through the Arts Council that I mentioned, which is a separate source of funding which can be bid for, which can support different library initiatives and projects uh, at local level, mm -hmm. typically for projects that bring different library services and authorities uh, together. Mm -hmm. Um, the Business and IP Centre service that I mentioned is also PAN UK and can attract additional sponsorship and, and, uh, and funding support. Uh, and then at the British Library itself, we have recently launched uh, an initiative we call the Living Knowledge Network. Our mantra at the library is, is living knowledge and so we now have a network um, and that is a voluntary partnership between some of the most dynamic public library authorities in the country to work together to do joint projects, to do joint exhibitions, joint learning activities, uh, and together to use our combined um, strength to raise additional funds from government or public or, or charitable sources. And I suppose that's um, maybe that's more bottom-up from the profession, that's, that's a piece of self-organisation, but it's proving very effective. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for all your answers, Mr. Keating, and we have one uh, favour. Can you make a wish <laughs> to our librarians uh, <laughs> who are going to modernise their libraries, who are going to change something in the life of the uh, community? Mm. Um, this to the camera, some work, maybe some ideas for some some, anything you like. Oh, <laughs> well. to, to the uh, every healthy society needs the strongest possible public library system. The, the mission you're embarking on is one of the most important things any country can do, which is to open up knowledge, learning, research and enjoyment to communities at every level. And I wish you every success with it. Thank you very much.